common statement. But he gave them the most descriptive and he gave them the most detailed of this. And so as we go into the word of God today, unfortunately the camera is not working for you to be able to see the scripture. Let's follow along into your Bible. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. And I'm going to be reading right here from the New Living Translation in my Bible. The New Living Translation. So follow along with me into your Bible as you read. And here is what the word of God says. How the stuff of David's family will shoot, will grow a shoot. Yet, a branch bearing fruit from the whole root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and man, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of God, and he will delight in obeying the word, the Lord of God. He will not judge by appearance, nor make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions. For the exploding. And the earth will shake at the force of his word. And one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. And he will wear righteousness like a bell and shoot like an undergarment. Verses 16. In that day, a wolf and a lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The cow and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and the little child will lead them home. The cow will gain near the bed. The cub and the calf will lay down together. The lion will eat air like a cub. The baby will play safely near the hole of the cub. Yes, a little child will put his hands in the nest of a deadly cynic with her arm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain as the water fill the sea. So the earth will fill the people who know the Lord. And in that day, the hear of David throne will be a banner of salvation to the world. The nation will rally to him. The land where he lives will be a glorious place. Yeah, the word of God for the people of God. So these are the words of the prophet Isaiah, many years before Jesus was born, right? I thought the prophet Isaiah was given this message to give the people of God. And what that was necessary for God. So during this time when Isaiah gave this message, David's royal line was slowly deceasing. It wasn't as popular as it was before. You know, David was a strong king and he had all the people in the school. But at this time, David's royal line was slowly deceasing. And so now, he was a prophet, Isaiah, at the time when he bring this word, when the big fought this message from the whole room. The current king was King Uzziah, and he just died of leprosy. And now his son, 25 years old, was a king. And what this man is hearing while he grieved his father is that Isaiah said, a more perfect king is coming. Trust God to do what he intends to do. Trust God to do exactly what he promised to do. God is going to get you out of this. He is sending a king. Oh my goodness, everybody said this king would be 
when he said, he said that the spirit of the Lord will rest in him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and man. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Come on now. And so you and I say, you tell me that the Lord is able to bring forth a perfect king from the old root, from the old stuff, where people are surely forgetting about this great life of king. But God said, I will raise up something fresh, something new out of this stuff. God is able to change any situation that you are going through. God is able to do something mind-blowing, even in this time of pandemic. God is able to bring changes in your life that you never know He is capable. God is able to do the impossible, even in your situation, when you trust Him. But look at it. None of these people were believing as I know this time. Because they feel like He was just a prophet who was always bringing bad news to the people. But it's bad news and it's good news that we're all true because they came from God. And so, Isaiah said, out of the root of Jesse, when you are a child of God, you too come from the root of Jesus. You too have the spirit of the Lord rest upon you. God is waiting for his people to recognize the power that is within them. We sit by and be a passive about what God has made us to do. But Possible, 
Our faith needs to break forth. And let us walk in confidence into this world, knowing that the Spirit of the Lord is up in us, just like it was up in our Savior Jesus. Mount Zion, if you don't know the meaning of that word, Mount Zion means God's holy mountain. It's the place where God goes to meet his people. God is still walking among his people. He is still here for you to see him with your eyes and with your hearing. Not physically, spiritually. God is still walking among them. He is still going to be possible to us if we are willing to trust and believe in Him. Many of us are more than we even know. But we allow the enemy lies to steam in our ears. There is so much I can't do. One of the big things that's going on in the world today is that we are trusting in our feeling more than we are trusting in God's I see, for example, if we don't feel like coming to church today, we are not coming to church. If we don't feel the spirit of God moving toward Letting us speak in tongues or letting us dance or do something, we don't believe the Spirit of God is here. We all become the people of God who worship or idolize our feeling. How do I feel today? But God is about your emotions. He to your emotions, not for you to live by them, but for you to understand. So now you don't see the spirit of God in you, doesn't mean the spirit of God is in you. You don't see that you have the ability to prophesy, doesn't mean that you don't have the ability to prophesy. We have to let go of our feelings and trust in God. Our feelings are next to them, our emotions are next to them. But we gotta trust in God's word more than we trust in our feelings. The Bible tells us that God is living among his people now. He's doing that through the Holy Spirit. God's holy mountain. Look around me. Do you feel like this is God's holy mountain? Not because you don't see him, see and hear God does mean we just not change. With one challenge, with two or more of a challenge, he will be there. So come and sit among us today. He doesn't need you to feel him, he needs you to trust him. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all of us. We lack an whole understanding. The Bible also tells us today in verses 9 it says, Nothing will earth or destroy in all my holy mountain, for all the world should fill the sea, so the hurt fill the people who know the Lord. Do you know? No. You see, God wants you to know Him. You can't want you to know Him. To truly know Him. There is a difference between knowing about God and knowing God. There is a big difference between knowing as a grandkid and actually being. Experience them. Mm -hmm. We can see on TV. We can watch it online or we can do it. When you're here, 
Ends. You get to recognize and see the present and the power. I see that's the way God wants us to know, to understand Him. And so when we get to know God, we know we truly work. And when we read God's word and God's word reveal our spirits, it's time for us to say, okay, this is what God wants me to know. But the God we say, we know. It's one that we don't believe is within our presence, um, within our midst. That's why we sin. Because if we know, trust, and believe that God is still on me, we would not sin. We would not fall short. I know this because once we are driving, if we know there is no car to find it, we're going to. Slow down. Notice that God is in our mischange, our behavior, our action, and our thinking. God's future blessing is guaranteed. He said Christ will come again. And that's a guarantee. He said Christ will take us to his kingdom, and that's a guarantee. The Bible would tell us that every knee shall bow. And every time they'll confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Especially those who don't believe that Christ exists. When he comes, they're going to be like, wow, this is really true. I should be. Mm. Yes, that's what our future will be like for the day that Jesus should come. Here to the throne of David. Come on now. And those who wait in it, those who believe in it, those who follow him, will be with him in this glorious kingdom. See, our hope and our future lies in Jesus. History is important. But we can't really believe it all over again. There's a many faithful members in church. More faithful members than faithful members. I hear people talk about the good old days. We're not able to do such and such. But today, this present time will be somebody else's good old days of the future. So we have to live in knowing that God is here now. So we don't focus on the good of the days of the past. But now, where we are in the midst of God, where he can use us and be with us in his presence. Mm. There are three key aspects, three important things that we know are guaranteed to Jesus. And we have our faith to trust in him and believe in him that we will remember these two things. The first thing is that believers will all go to heaven. That's the guarantee. Believers will all go to heaven. First Peter 1 verses 4 says, And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure, undefiled, beyond the reach of change. You have a future in heaven when you are a child of God. The second thing is Jesus will come again. That is the promise that we know is guaranteed, right? But do we live to sure that Jesus is coming again? Why did Jesus come today? We are not gathered together as we should. What would Jesus do? Those of us who are here, but be relieved and say, oh, yeah, I am fellowshipping with the same. Hmm. And the third thing is that the dead will rise. That's the guarantee. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, it says, This will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye. 
when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will raise to live again forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. So knowing that the devil rise, Jesus has to get and we will go to heaven. She gives us joy, peace, and hope. And so I ask you this. How are you living as someone with a future of hope, peace, and joy? That's the question I want you to meditate on this week. How am I living as someone with a future of hope, joy, and peace? God will soon turn up for gloomy days and glorious days. He will soon turn our stump into a blossom. Trust that God will deliver you from everything that you are going through. He promised that he would do it, and his promises are true. God's timing is perfect. It's not a word, but it is. Our future is guaranteed in Christ Jesus. The world we live in today, but in it. As a preparation for when Christ returns, because we don't know what day he is. Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 17. Seek the Lord by you can find. Call him now while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thoughts of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord. That he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to your God, and he will forgive generously. The God we serve is so gracious and merciful that even when we turn our back to him, he's still waiting for us to come. This happens even while we prepare for the return of the first day. Let us remember that his promise is achieved. Remember that he even chewed the, the prophet Isaiah. God gave a reminder. So tell me that those of the years before Isaiah's prophecy will not come true. Then Jesus was born. Jesus came, he died, just like Isaiah said he was. God promises are guaranteed. He promised you that you have a future with him. He promised you that even while you are here on earth, you can have joy, peace, and hope. And so we must live that way each and every day. We must feel the joy of the Lord as our strength. His joy is our strength. And so as we prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ, let us ask Him to fill our hearts with hope, joy, and peace. That no matter what we are going through, we know our place with Christ is guaranteed because we believe the word that God has given to us. Jesus promised will come alive again. And so at this time, I want to ask you to just stand over the church. And as we remember that this is the season of preparation. As we remember that Christ came first. During this Advent season, what's keeping our joy at day? What's keeping our peace at day? What's allowing us to be more sad than be filled with joy? Don't I think that we have to surrender to God. He has given us all that we need to live in complete reverence for him. He has given us all to his son Jesus, but yet we suffer. Yet we grieve. Yet we cry. And we feel lost. 
God has never forgiven us. His promise are always guaranteed. He promised that one day you will be with him. But that promise is not for everyone. It's only for those who accept Christ and get you something. And so if you have not done so, I want to ask you to do so now. And if you have already accepted Christ in your personal savior in your life, just raise your hand for a second. And then you know what? The hands in here shall be. Amen. Amen. Because I want Jesus. Now you are Jesus. I want Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. And so your promises is true. And so those of you who are watching in line, if you have got Jesus, then I want to invite you to do so. If you're on our online platform, just click that button that says, I accept Christ and to all my life as your personal Savior. Or you can just grab your phone and text say to 888 I made it easy for you to be able to walk with Jesus, to talk with Jesus. And at this time, I just want to close and pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for the message you've given to us. Thank you for the promise of come to your center. And at this moment, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that every person within your mystery will receive joy into their heart. So that no matter what they are going through, they can put their trust in you. We thank you for the promise that come to your son Jesus Christ. We thank you that because your spirit was on him, it is on us too. And so I pray you thank God for anyone who is ready to turn their heart to you. I pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to be upon our heart today. And so that today we will feel your presence with him, your joy with him. Today, we will be able to know the power and the love. Come to your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for forgiveness of sin. 